But at some point, we begin to have this feeling of not being quite comfortable again. Something's nudging at us. Uh, there's, there's something, we may feel like we're lacking something. And we may not be able to define it. This is called divine discontent. It's when the box that we have been living in has become too small for the bigness of who we're becoming. Can y'all believe that Roderick sings for us every Sunday? I was moved by that. I don't know if y'all were, <laughs> but I was definitely moved. I have a question for you this morning, and that is, have you ever seen something being birthed before? I mean, maybe puppies or kitties, or you might have even seen a child being birthed. I haven't. <clears throat> But, but, you know, we're so fortunate today that we have things like the internet and broadband and fiber, and they can bring those sorts of things right into your very own home so that you could witness something like that. And, and then, of course, you know, we had COVID, and we were all sheltering in place and staying home, and, um, and you might have turned on the TV a few more minutes than you usually do, and, and even, you might have even signed up for Netflix, and, and you might have even watched a series or two on Netflix. Personally, I did. <laughs> and one of the series that I, I really liked is called Calling, Call the Midwife. Call the Midwife. And I... Any series where they speak with that British accent is going to get me, okay? I like that. Uh, but it's pretty wholesome, and they, the characters were nice and well-developed, and you got to know them and like them. So, uh, so I like that series. But, of course, the midwives were there to help women give birth. And most of the time, it was, at least in the beginning of the series, it was in their own homes. So the process would go like this the woman would be pregnant and she'd call the midwife. So the midwife would come to her home and then she would begin to ask questions. And she would ask questions to determine if the space was going to be suitable for a newborn. And she would ask questions to find out maybe if there were things in the space that needed to be removed for it to be safe for a child, and, and, and then they would also bring a, a bucket of supplies that were gonna be necessary for when the delivery actually happened. And then, when it was time for the woman to actually give birth, when, when she went into labor, they'd call the midwife. And the midwife would get on her little bicycle and pedal as fast as she could to the home because she wanted to be there uh, to assist in the birth. To, to, to be the coach. Now she co would coach, of course, the woman, the woman, the pregnant woman did the work, but the midwife would coach her into, okay, now breathe, breathe this way. Okay, now you gotta push. See, there was, I was really kind of amazed. There was a lot of breathing and a lot of pushing <laughs> that goes on in that process of birth. It takes a lot of effort. And it, and wow, my hat is off to all of, all of the women that do that, um, <laughs> definitely. And so, so then, then, now you think, okay, great, we're gonna have this baby, it's gonna come out all pink and dry and fluffy, but no. <laughs> when the baby comes out, it's messy. It's, it's covered in fluids and, and then, you know, that needs to be cleaned up. And then, um, th then there's the afterbirth, the tissue that the baby was held in in the womb has to be delivered and cleaned up. And the whole process is kind of messy. Birth is messy. 
And even after the event, that event happens, then, then there's still more work to do because when, when, after the baby emerges, well, for them to, to emerge into what you really want them to be as a, as a, as a beautiful, healthy, uh, older child, there are things you have to do. You gotta feed them, change the diapers, clothe them. There are a lot of things that have to go on to tend to them. And so in this series, sometimes the women needed help with that, so they would call the midwife. And she would come on her bicycle. You might be saying, Jean, that's well and good. I'm glad you enjoyed that series. <laughs> but uh, what does that have to do with me? <laughs> well, it has a lot to do with me, and it has a lot to do with y'all, because the process of birth is always ongoing. See, there's a cycle of life, and it not only happens with people and puppies and kitties, but it also happens in, in many other ways within our very own lives. There's a cycle, and how it goes is that there's a creation phase, and then there's a, a sustaining phase, and then there's a deconstruction phase where what has been built and enjoyed, it's time for it to pass, and then there's sort of like a void before the whole thing starts again. It's a cycle, a cycle of life. And as we are told by, by Dr. Sue Mortar, we're always birthing into a new expression of ourselves. So we are always being birthed. We are always being turned into something new. That's good news, right? We like new. The advertisers figured that out a long time ago. They put new and improved on the box. It's much more likely to end up in our basket. So they know that. And even, even at Unity, in some similar-minded churches, we call ourselves New Thought. It's new. It's different than the old religious way of thinking that a lot of people have had. And in New Thought, we say things like, what you think about, you bring about. So we realize that even, th that we can change and become new within our own, within our own lives. That change your thinking, change your life. We say those kind of things because we've figured out that that's, that's true. If we can uh, like Dan mentioned, that mind, if we can get that mind to not run over the, the what, 85, 95% negative things it's talking about and actually have something positive that we want to have manifested, that it's much more likely to do so. So we know that in New Thought. That's why, that's why Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, who were co-founders of Unity, they called it practical Christianity. It's because we can use it to, to support ourselves in this life. We can, we can use this newness and the power of thought to, to, uh, to add more joy to our lives, to give us more fulfillment in what we're doing. Practical indeed. Practical indeed. So we, we want this newness. So how does, how does it happen that we're ready for a birth? <laughs> well... <laughs> So it could, let's, let's just say on the spiritual side, so you, you, you found a spiritual way of living and, and you were really excited about it and you started buying and reading books. By the way, our bookstore has great books. It's the only metaphysical bookstore here in Austin. Uh, so you bought books and you read them and you went to seminars and you did your prayer and you did your meditation and you were on this path and life was really beautiful. And so you kept doing those things that you were doing. But then somewhere along the line, it may seem a little flat. Maybe like, well, I'm doing all of these things, but I'm not feeling the same way I used to feel about it. Or something just isn't clicking for me like it did. Perhaps, perhaps there's a habit that we've had that we never got rid of, that, that it's kind of nudging us a little bit. You know, it's really time to let go of that. Or perhaps we've just gotten complacent. I mean, things got so good that we kind of eased up on our practices. That was easy to do while we were watching called the midwife. 
wasn't it? Um, but at some point, we begin to have this feeling of not being quite comfortable again. Something's nudging at us. Uh, there's, there's something, we may feel like we're lacking something, and we may not be able to define it. This is called divine discontent. Divine discontent. It's when the box that we have been living in has become too small for the bigness of who we're becoming. See, we're always evolving. We're always growing. We're, we're always uh, expanding, raising, raising to higher and higher levels of consciousness. And where we are gets too small to hold that. Divine discontent. When this happens, it's time for a new birth. Now, Eckhart Tolle tells us that real inner growth usually does not come when things are going well. That's not where awakening happens. Awakening comes when chaos breaks into your life. Doesn't it happen like that a lot of times? You'll be rocking along and then something will come and just, just upset everything. And then that's when we realize, oh, it's time for me to birth something new here. Because I don't, I don't have what's needed to handle this thing that's going on, this chaos that's going on. One thing we know is change is inevitable. It's going to happen because it's the nature of the presence to continually evolve. So it's going to happen in our lives with our permission or without our permission. So the question is, it, do we approach it with intention and with a, a, some form of grace? Or does it take us kicking and screaming? It is our choice. Now, it may be that we, we decide that, okay, I'm, I'm kind of ready for a new birth, but, um, but maybe I don't want to give up the things that I've been doing so that I can make space for this new birth. Well, Afeni Shakur says, you can't change anything without causing some degree of disruption. It's impossible. That's exactly what change is. Disruption. Disruption. Is anything trying to be birthed in your life? Is there something that's been nudging you a little bit? A lot of times we get those nudges around the first of the year. And we make resolutions and things like that. But we know. We know, don't we? when it's time, because it's always happening. Our church right now is undergoing a birth, isn't it? We've had a lot of disruption, mm -hmm. but we're going through that process, and we're the ones to be the midwives, to bring what needs to emerge, what wants to emerge, up. And yes, the disruption that we've had has been messy. And birth is messy. But it is also so rewarding, so fulfilling, so worth it. I have some tools that I brought with us, with me this morning, and I like acronyms. Today's acronym is AGE, A-G-E. And so it stands, um, it, it, it's sort of like as you age, you will be birthed many times. You can think of it in that, in that term, in those terms. So the first A in the acronym stands for ask. Ask. In, in the life visioning process, which is um, a, a very powerful process where we're in, the, in, the, um, in a meditative state asking the higher self 
uh, certain questions about what is the vision for us. One of the questions is, what must I release in order for this vision to manifest? And that's one of the questions we want to ask when we're in the birthing process is, what do I need to release so this birth can happen? See, we have to make space for the new that's going to come in. We can't just keep glomming it on top of what is already there. So what is it that we can release? Now, sometimes this is a scary question because if we're still in a state of duality, we can think, okay, if I say I should release this, then that means that I'm flawed. We can think, um, there's so, I'm not doing something right. You know that old, that old thing about being right or wrong. We could think I'm wrong and therefore I have to release something so I can now be right. See, that's the dualistic way of thinking, but we're so fortunate that in New Thought, at Unity, we have a couple of principles that can help us get out of that fear of asking the question. And the first principle is that there is one presence, one, one power, one. And we're not talking about, uh, okay, this big God over here and then there are no other gods over here. We're talking about everything is this one presence. There's one energy, there's one consciousness there's only one. That means everything I see is this one. Every one I see is this one. And then the second principle follows it. I must be made of that very stuff. So it's not like the one went over here and took some clay and made me and then breathed a little bit of itself in me. No. Because then the clay would be outside of it, right? No. The presence took part of itself and formed each one of us out of itself. We are that presence. It is how it expresses itself by creating. And so if we are that presence, can we ever be wrong? I don't think so. Can we ever be lacking something? I don't think so. Can, can our lives that we've lived up to this point have been a mistake? I don't think so. Instead, the presence wants to explore, wants to express, wants to... Um, wants to, through many, many different experiences, find out how it can express in an even higher way. That's all we're doing here. So when it comes time to ask that question, what do I need to release? What do I need to let go of? We can know that it's simply because of that thing that served me before is no longer needed, so I can let go of it. Not that we're wrong, not that we're bad, there's no judgment. It's just that, okay, it's time to let it go. And to move on for what else this essence wants me to have in my human form. And sometimes we resist the change. After all, ego doesn't like change. We could call it the protective personality. That's, that's a little bit nicer. Um, but it doesn't like change, especially if you're talking about spiritual change, because spiritual change brings about fundamental changes in our lives. And the protective personality would rather rock along thinking it's in charge. Well, Carl Jung knew this and said, the birth of the self is always a defeat for the ego. Always a defeat for the ego. 
in recovery, there's, there's a book that's called Alcoholics Anonymous, but a lot of, a lot of people in recovery call it the big book. And there, there's, a, there's a step that it talks about in there where, where you take inventory. And, and what it says is that you want to take an inventory, you want to take a look inside because, because you don't want to be holding on to, to goods that you can't sell anymore or that have no value, that have expired. You want to you get rid of those. Get rid of them promptly and without regret, it says. We want to be able to do that, to let go of those things so that we can move on, so that we can surrender to the process without fear. So we ask. And remember, who are we asking? We're not asking something up there. We're asking our own higher self, our essential self, the self of us that was before we came and became human in a body, the self that exists always. That's who we ask. What is it that I need to let go of? What wants to emerge here? And then we listen for that voice. We listen for that voice too. So that's the ask, that's the A. Now, we're at the G. And once we've listened and heard what it is that we need to be moving on, the G stands for get with it. <laughs> get with it. It's time to do it then. And it helps us to know that yes, birth is going to be messy. We know it's gonna be messy. We're gonna go into it anyway. I mean, after all, when you plant a little seed in the ground and it starts growing up, it's got to disturb the earth to push through. Or like the little chicken in the egg has to poke and crack that eggshell. It's messy. So we just know, okay, it's going to be messy. We know it. And, and we remember that, you know, <clears throat> if nothing changes, nothing changes. So there's going to be disruption. And, and there's going to be effort, you know, maybe a lot of pushing and a lot of breathing going on. There's going to be some effort that's required here. And so what kind of effort might that be? Well, if you're talking about your spiritual life, perhaps, uh, perhaps we have to, like, get up 30 minutes earlier to do our practices, maybe. Or if if we're sensing maybe a, a lack of spiritual community, maybe we need to volunteer at our spiritual center here at the church. Or if it's something like, if it's something like our health, you know, perhaps we um, buy food that's a little bit more healthy when we go to the store. But of course, if we're really getting with it, once we get that food home, we have to eat it. <laughs> we can't just let it stay in the refrigerator until it's past its prime. You know, is it still there? Oh, it is. Maybe in another day, maybe in another day, it'll be, you know, I'll just have to throw it out. No, we have to eat it um, if, that's, if that's what we're doing. We have to get with it. And... And so, you know, maybe you're saying, well, I'm, I'm feeling this urge. I know I need to birth, but I'm not really sure what it is I'm, I'm to do yet. So do not fear about that, though, because remember, we are the presence. And the presence wants to evolve. It wants to grow. So it's not going to hide what is yours to do. It's not going to hide it from you. It's going to make it known. And it'll be clear. You'll hear a voice. You'll see something. You'll hear a song on the radio. You'll just feel led to go up to someone and talk to them. Whatever it is that it's yours to do, it will, it will be made known to you. Don't, don't be afraid that it won't. Now, what, another thing that we can do when we're getting with it is to prepare not only emotionally, but also to prepare physically. And, and one of the best ways to do this is by using the breath. Now, in, in, in Call the Midwife, they, they do a lot of breathing there. And, 
And one thing you notice is that the, the way they breathe is in harmony with what's going on with the rest of the body. And so we also want to breathe in harmony with what's going on. So there's a particular way that energy flows through us. And if we can breathe in alignment with that, it will really help clear blockages and it will help us um, be able to accept things at a higher level and be able to act at a higher level. And the way that happens is that energy flows down through the body, down into the earth, and then it comes back up, stepped up, and then it goes out and circles around. You might have seen pictures of angels with something like wings on them. That was simply the energy field being made visible to certain people. So if we can breathe in alignment with how that energy flows, then our lives will be so much better. So in the meditation, we'll be, be doing a little bit of that breathing. But when, we, when we're getting with it, okay, we want to we wanna breathe like that, always in the belly, always through the nose. We want to breathe like that whenever we feel overwhelmed about what we're being asked to do or whenever we're not quite ready to give up what it is that we have to give up or when we're in utter joy at what's emerging. All of those times we breathe. We breathe, and this is how we get with it on a physical level, in addition to the spiritual, emotional, mental. So that's the G. So we're down to the E, and the E is emerge. So Reverend Michael Beckler tells us, remind yourself of the good news often right before you have a breakthrough, you have a breakdown, a releasing. We talked about that. But when you come through it, transformation has happened. Transformation. That's not, um, oh, I got a little bit better. Transformation is something new. Something new emerges. There's a birth that's happened. And, and, and the work is not over once just that one event has happened. Like with a little baby, there are things that we have to do to tend, to, to raise, to uh, grow up, whatever has birthed itself in our lives. We give it our attention. We hold it in love and prayer if we need to change our schedules, we change our schedules. If it's health we're about, you know, perhaps we sign up for that yoga class, but you know what I'm gonna say? You have to go to the yoga class if you sign up for it. <laughs> we emerge, we em emerge into this, into this new thing, but we take care of ourselves, we take care of what's being born, of the new little shoot coming up from the ground. We tend to it. I mentioned before, right now, our, our church is in a birthing process, and there's a lot that needs to be tended here. And there, there are many ways that, that we can do that. We, we have a community garden out there. You know, it's almost spring, so guess what? They're going to be uh, needing to be weeding and planting going on. We have, we have a hospitality team that they, you know, they not only make coffee for us and put out sweets, but they're there to, to make us feel welcome, to make us feel like we're part of this community, to give us a space to gather together. In the youth and family department, there are places where you can be with the children and help teach them that they are the presence, that they don't need to feel bad about themselves, that they don't need to go through everything we went through, if that applies to you. There's so many places that we can tend in addition to holding in prayer and love. 
And so in this emergence, we tend it and then we get to behold what amazing thing has come forth from this whole birthing process. You know, individually, we've been through a lot in our lives. I know every one of us has. In this church, we've been through a lot. After all, we came to earth to do the heavy lifting. That's why we came at this particular point in time to do that. So the question I have is, what are we waiting for? Thank you. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I circulate, and I am grateful.